Um, thanks to everyone who's joined us today. And thank you to Sophie Roney, who um, put together this presentation in a uh, very short order, had been planning, but we're really glad to have her here because this topic is something that will um, be lingering for quite some time. So it's good to, to um, understand um, what's happening um, with tech recruitment right now and to think a little bit more long term. So if you're not familiar, Sophie Roney has been our recruiter in residence since about this time last year, actually. I was thinking it's been about a year that we've had her as part of the Research Park team. Um, she is available to work with our tenants one-on-one, -on -one, her, 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 um, uh, her, her primary role is to work with companies on their full-time recruitment and in lots of different ways. And um, she, she is, has a vast background in tech recruiting in Champaign-Urbana, had worked at Wolfram and at uh, Granular for a long time and really helped to build up the operation here and um, we're really excited just to have her expertise and continue to be able to um, look to her for information and resources and today we'll be talking about how we can keep employers abreast of, of how this situation is impacting um, employment in the tech industry and the local economy. So with that I will turn it over to Sophie. So thanks again. Thank you Laura. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Just making sure. Awesome. Um, so today I'll be presenting on the state of recruiting as impacted by COVID-19, um, going over from a national perspective and then also from a state and then locally to Champaign-Urbana as well, and then some takeaways and things that you can do for your business and your teams now. <laughs> Um, one thing to take note of is there's there's quite a lot of information in this presentation. And so at the beginning, I'll point out that there's a folder that has access to all the links and all the data that you can um, that you can look at for yourself or go to the various different sources for them. Um, and then if you need access, I'm happy to grant it to you afterwards, but everybody should have access. Um, okay, so I will share my screen. Okay, and can everybody see this okay? Awesome. So, as I mentioned, um, this is just the general topics that we'll be going over today. And this is a hyperlink here to the folder that you can open so that um, you can follow along as well and, um, and have resources to the various different lists that are included in this presentation. Okay, so a few definitions and caveats to start out. Um, as we all know, tech is really embedded in every industry at this point. So just because it's JCPenney doesn't mean they don't have software engineers um, or the airline industry or hospitals. Tech is really embedded in every single industry at this point. And so for the purpose of this presentation, software engineering talent is what we'll use as a benchmark for um, what's going on with tech specifically in order to um, gain access to tech talent or understand what to do from that point of view. Um, I also will talk a lot about these waves. So the first wave being companies directly impacted by the shutdown, restaurants, airlines, transportation, um, the ones that we're all very familiar with, and then second wave companies that we haven't seen as much action with um, but based on this research, what, what might be coming and, and what we can do about that. Um, and then another maybe acronym that you may, are or are not familiar with is go to market talent. So this is talent typically that's laid off first that we're seeing with tech companies um, where sales, marketing, customer success, administrative roles and recruiting, for example, are being laid off first. Um, versus the production side, which would be product managers, software engineering, um, those that create 
what the go-to-market team would advertise and sell. Um, and then the last caveat here is take the job posting data sometimes with a grain of salt. Um, depending on the source, there can be duplications. So for example, I might post on Indeed. I also might post on Monster. And so when there's these duplications, it can exaggerate data. Um, and so it's something to be wary of when you're looking at job posting data yourself. And, um, and I'll point it out here where it's relevant. Okay, so the state of tech pre-COVID was definitely a talent market. So what I mean by that is the power was shifted in the, in the talent direction. Um, companies had to really fight over finding good tech talent as shown by the price of software engineering, software developers, mobile developers, and also the perks that companies were starting to generate in order to attract talent. Um, this is also seen by most software engineers in really any area had multiple offers when they were on the market. So this is the state pre-COVID. And the question now is, um, will the power shift to the companies or will it shift somewhere in the middle where there'll be less demand from companies and then a higher supply of talent given that um, a lot of companies are slowing down hiring, freezing hiring altogether, and then in some cases laying off. And so this is the big question really for this presentation is how will this power dynamic be affected in the recruitment industry? So this is an important note when we think about what will happen and what we and how we should adjust as um, as people either seeking tech talent or um, or potentially laying off is what will happen. So on the right is the L curve. So this is an example of um, what happens in an economy in a in a recession. This is a longer recovery as there you as you see this the economy going down in 1990 and then doing a very slow recovery. Then to the right, you see the blue U curve, which is a quicker recovery than the L curve, but still a, a slower recovery as it takes multiple years. And then what we're hoping for and what economists suggest will happen is this B curve, where because a lot of this is temporary measures, temporary shutdowns, that businesses will bounce back very quickly. When you're thinking about recruitment and your own timeline for your company, um, it's important to pay attention and, and see what the signs are of what we are actually experiencing. Um, I sure hope that it's the V situation, um, and it looks like it, however, these are also possible scenarios and, and really too soon to tell. So to put this in perspective, this unemployment into perspective, um, last, or in 2008, you can see on this graph, which is kind of barely noticeable at this point, when we look at national unemployment as we move into April, and notice that this graph here does not even um, move into the later phases of April. So it is a, a, a highly unprecedented time for unemployment, considering where we were as well in February, where we had um, around two to three point five percent unemployment, which was some of the lowest since World War II. And so this is drastically different in a very, very short period of time. And um, and we we still don't know what this will look like, but it's it's becoming more drastic into April now. Um, a lot of these are frontline workers and in the service industry and the tourism industry that we've seen the most drastic layoff with so far. And if you have questions, please, um, please chat in and, and we'll get to them. So this shows you a graph slightly more into April in terms of April versus January and February and March where we definitely experienced a very low unemployment compared to what's happening now. And um, when I was chatting with Carly at the Champaign Economic Development Committee, she said that there is actually trouble 
filing unemployment claims. And so some of these numbers might even be underestimated as there has been, um, it hasn't been smooth sailing, I think, in, in every unemployment office. Okay, so now looking at recruitment data at a national level, this is from Indeed, and you can see that um, 2020 is an orange. And so this is a idea of what has happened with job postings across the board. This is not isolated to tech, but this gives you an idea that as soon as the as the stay at home orders went into place at mid March, things really start to shift in terms of what companies are actively hiring. And again, um, throughout these slides, all of the links are, are at the bottom. So you're, you're welcome to go back through them later. And then at a national level as well, we have um, some of the larger companies and what's happening at a, at a Fortune 500 level. We know that some companies like Walmart and Merck and Pfizer and Home Depot are actually up, but still the overall trend is down in terms of what we're experiencing in the hiring market and the demand for talent. So these aren't necessarily tech companies, of course Apple is. Um, however, we are still seeing an overall downturn and this does decrease overall demand for tech talent as, um, as every company does, does look for software engineers, software developers, product managers, et cetera. Looking at job postings in terms of what industries are affected. So you can walk outside or talk to your neighbors and you know that hospitality and tourism are impacted and food and services and drinks are impacted. But this is a slightly more developed list from Indeed in terms of job postings, but also from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it's done in two slightly different ways. So one's by job postings and the graph on the right is done by percentage of people that have, that are employed by these sectors that are deemed um, really at risk and with projected loss. So um, real estate and, and recreation, pop up on this list when they when they're maybe categorized different on the other so when you're thinking about industries to recruit from or what industries are impacted um, the importance of multiple sources is and and the way that the data is broken down is important to look at but this is what are we're seeing at a government level and then at a national job postings level and you can see here, um, in terms of tech specifically, it says software development is down by, uh, by 29%. And we'll, we'll look into that a little bit more later. So startups, <clears throat> they're definitely taking a harder hit um, due to not yet having a product market fit. Um, many startups rely on VC money and we know that VC money is definitely going down in, um, in the overall market. And, um, and sometimes the startups have started out in an industry that is really irrelevant and almost impossible to gain traction as a, as a younger company. So in the overall labor market, we're seeing a lot more layoffs, specifically from startups. Um, or that startups have said that they are um, freezing hiring. So by industry, uh, this is important to look at in detail yourself as well. Um, so you can see the source at the bottom is layoffs.fyi, and I'll talk about this source quite a bit. Um, it is a daily tracker of what's going on in the software industry where you can see exactly what companies are being laid off and it even has contacts of those employees so that you can contact them if you're if you're interested in their skill set um, now this is this is public company or this does not include public companies and is only through 422 um, and it's important to note that there's some anomalies here and, and when we talk about food, what does that mean? So we all know um, Instacart is doing very, very well, and they would be considered in the in the food industry. Um, there's another 
start that's not doing so well, sweet greens. And that's because they have a brick and mortar location. They make their money through foot traffic. And we know that that's specifically down versus um, home delivery, which is up. So in order to understand the nuances still of some of these categories, it's really important to actually click in there and get examples of these companies that are laying off versus that, um, that, are, that are doing well in the startup space. And it's important to note here about the startups because by and large, they do have a lot of tech talent and demand a lot of tech talent as well. So moving into the next slide, um, in terms of areas impacted, and we'll, we'll brush back on, on startups as well in, in a slide. Um, again, there's a discrepancy depending on how you look at it, but definitely overall um, overlap between if you look at it via job postings or the percentage of people living in areas that have a high percentage of at-risk industries. So, this is um, fairly intuitive in some sense that high tourism areas are, are greatly impacted. So Hawaii, um, Utah, and, um, and Las Vegas for sure. These, these make sense from, from, a good, from thinking about what's happening from just your own personal perspective. But then there's also ones that, that are less intuitive for me, um, Laredo, Texas, and um and brunswick georgia so those inquire more investigation for me as a recruiter in order to understand what type of talent might be laying being laid off there and why um, and if you are searching to hire tech talent at this point it's important to take a note of some of these areas impacted as maybe there's an opportunity for there to be a win-win situation where people would make a move at this point um, to Illinois, to Champaign-Urbana. Um, and so it's definitely worth considering in your overall recruitment strategy. And then going back to startups here, um, notice that Chicago is not on this list. If you look at um, layoffs.fyi, the tracker, there's about six or seven startups that are listed on there in Chicago. Um, and so I know that, but, um, but this is by and large um, a accurate representation, but it's still helpful to dig into the data. So these are the leading areas impacted by startup layoffs specifically. And um, this isn't surprising that the SF Bay Area and then New York City are composing a majority of those layoffs because they have a higher number of startups overall and um, and have a larger in general population again if you're if you're looking for employees to um, to hire if you're if you're in the fortunate camp then these are areas that you may consider targeting um, in terms of there being a larger supply of talent that is that is currently available So what types of startups are laying off? Um, we're seeing mostly later stage startups. And this can likely be attributed to the fact that smaller startups, if you're in the series A, B, you just have less employees overall. Those startups maybe have 20 or less employees and they already run very lean, um, mostly with engineering and the product development side. And then when you get to series C, D and E, that's when you start to hire sales and marketing and other go-to-market roles. And so to me, this makes sense of why we'd be seeing later stage startups then laying off more people as, they've, as they have more people to lay off, especially on the go-to-market side. So here's a quick summary is who is being laid off. Um, so startups, we're definitely seeing that, again, due to their funding status and then impacted industries. So I've been thinking about this of industries that are on the front line that are, that are damaged by just the overall lack of foot traffic. So airlines, retail, restaurant, tourism. 
Um, and then on the spreadsheet here, you can actually see a list of tech companies that have started to lay off. Um, a big one in the news are the Uber and Lyfts who are brokerage for the transportation organization. Um, and they started with their go-to-market teams and they're just now at the end of April starting to consider um, laying off engineering. Another example of that is Yelp, which is um, in the, the retail or space-ish and they are starting to lay off a large percentage of, of their employees as well. Um, but again, they started with that go-to-market space and now starting to move on to the engineering space. So is engineering um, being laid off yet? What, is, what does that look like? Um, is, it a, is it a second wave or are we starting to see that already? And anecdotally, from my perspective, we are starting to see that quite a bit, um, but we're lacking the patterns at least so far in terms of where the engineers are by and large coming from um, and then what companies really will be in the second wave that are businesses that cater to businesses that are on the front lines meaning they're just one step removed from from what is happening um, one example of that is pinterest so pinterest has started laying off their employees and you, they're not necessarily a front line, um, a company that I think of in the first wave, but the reason why they're starting to let go is that their advertising is way down. So they get advertising from um, restaurants and people that are directly retailing their products that are going down. And therefore Pinterest as a second wave company is starting to feel that heat, but it's coming later than, than the first wave companies. So this um, is what's going on at a college level. If you're looking at um, new hires or internships. So the blue is April uh, 10th and then we see the red is April 24th. And there is a, it looked, the numbers are getting slightly worse from a student and internship perspective. So earlier on in the month, less employers were revoking offers. And then later on in the month, we see that number decline. And that's the same with, um, that's the same with some internships as well. So if you are looking for full-time employees from the university level um, or at an internship level, it's important to reconsider maybe that group as their status might have changed. Um, students are starting to come back to campus specifically in champaign urbana where they were not able to get out of their leases um, they no longer have internships set up for out of state companies out of illinois um, as travel restrictions have impacted that and so it's something to reconsider as you're thinking about internship talent or um, or full-time talent where it's worth looking into if any statuses have changed there for sure. So Illinois key dates, we, we all know about a lot of these, um, but one to note here is June 30th, which is when many companies have hiring freezes until, or travel, um, travel freezes, in terms of waiting it out and seeing what happens until they ramp hiring back up. Um, or take their, their freezes off. So we'll see this dip and maybe going back to one of the first slides with the economic curves, June 30th might be when we start to see the economic curve start to project back up as companies realize a new level of um, reality with their finances and either decide to hire or not. Um, but that's a good date to keep in mind when we're looking at what it will really happen with the talent economy. So looking specifically at Illinois, um, Champaign-Urbana, it's good to note here, it's always had a, a healthy level of unemployment in comparison to other parts of the state and other parts of the country. There's um, very established 
uh, strong employers that make up the, the community. Um, but this is for March. So a lot has happened in April and, um, and it's important for us to take note of what are going on in other counties as well. Um, so you can see up north and further south, there is higher levels of unemployment. And so if you are looking specifically for tech talent um, or talent in general, these are areas that are being more impacted than, than Champaign-Urbana specifically. And there's a new chart that should come out um, at the beginning of May that is adjusted specifically for April, which will be, which will be a much more telling. Okay, so Champaign-Urbana job postings. <clears throat> this compares 2019 to 2020. And as you can see on the graph to the left, um, as of April 25th, it was at a negative 8% um, compared to other counties and other parts of the nation. That's, that's not too bad, but we are seeing an overall dip in job postings. The majority of those will be in the, the service industry in terms of um, restaurants and bars and coffee shops and, um, and things of that first wave nature. If we look at what I'm calling the second wave here, um, software development is actually higher than it was in 2019. So when everyone is working from home, um, software development isn't as, infect as affected as they've already had the infrastructure set up to be able to work from home. And with this influx of people working remotely at this point, the demand for people that know how to um, program virtual setups is important. And so um, we are actually seeing an overall increase in demand and some of the main employers in Champaign-Urbana um, have, have not slowed down in terms of their posting. So we see um, Carl and the University of Illinois, uh, Granular and Oath and Wolfram, they're, they're all still steady employers in terms of tech town in the area. Um, the next slide just, it's a very similar thing, but it's isolating for software engineering postings. And so um, this might be counterintuitive when we think about what's happening in the state of talent right now, that, um, that everyone is being laid off. Um, but really, in terms of where we're at with April 24th, um, there's a healthy, there's a healthy level of tech talent still being employed. Um, at a, at an individual level, I get insights in terms of what people are, are seeing in the area. And there are more resumes starting to circulate as of the last week or two, um, with software engineering talent specifically. And, but there isn't a pattern so far of necessarily where they're coming from and, um, and what industries they are, um, their industries or companies, they are, they are flowing out of, but there is overall higher supply. So in reporting in Champaign-Urbana, um, you only have to report a layoff if it makes up more than a third of your staff. Um, so here are some of the rules about that, which is why you won't see a lot in the news potentially about, about layoffs around Champaign-Urbana. And it is something that you'll have to have, um, be more in tune with by understanding, by being in tune with your network and seeing what's going on with your own job postings. Um, layoffs.fyi does have that great tracker, which is a self-reporting way for startups and other organizations to report what's going on. Um, but again, going into May, we'll see some of those second waves companies starting to lay off. Um, so the companies here with an asterisk 
have actually started laying off engineering talent. So Eventbrite, Yelp, Uber, Lyft, Perkspot, um, these are all companies that are part of this first wave that are directly working with customers that are, that are impacted by the foot traffic and have started to let go of um, specifically engineering talent. But in Champaign-Urbana specifically, we will need to wait for the second wave a little bit more and see how, how this turns out um, for, for the tech area companies. So a summary here, um, the town supply is overall up in terms of people that are looking for jobs. That's very, very clear. Um, and then the number of companies that are hiring are down. We know this by the various number of freezes and, and looking at the daily headlines every day. Um, but we're still in the first wave. We're still looking at people that were directly affected by the shutdowns and that were impacted by the first wave of stay at home orders. Um, a lot of states have now come out with what is specifically going on with their opening up policies and when that might happen. And that is triggering what I see as a second wave as well in terms of companies that will start to get hit harder um, with the ambiguity of not knowing when things are opening up or with the surprise that this is lasting um, a certain amount of time and in some cases and in some states without an end date. Um, and so an example of these second wave companies, um, Pinterest, like I mentioned, and then Airbnb is a, on the border as um, they're getting quite a bit of funding to stay afloat, um, but they are a brokerage. And, and the first wave with Airbnb would be um, their actual hosts who are taking quite a massive hit in terms of what their income was last year versus this year in the tours, tourism industry. Um, now, going back to earlier slides, it was still so hard to find tech talent in the earlier um, months, even of this year and late last year. And, um, and so many companies are not holding their breath to scoop up um, any available talent where it's this win-win situation where, where they can then fill some of their harder engineering roles. And this is just a quick quote from one of the Glassdoor analysts who supports my opinion on that, that um, even though right now it's a very, there'll be a very high influx of people into the labor market, um, the bounce back will occur more quickly in the tech industry just because it had been so challenging recently to to get the the technical talent that was needed in the software development space okay so if you are an employer in champaign urbana um there there are benefits depending on um where you may be able to pull people from and from other parts of the nation so champaign urbana historically has a um, a very stable economy because of some of the top employers um, we, we know it has a lower cost of living or a healthy cost of living, no exorbitant rates. And now that anyone can work remote, um, it's a nice place to work given what we have seen in the cities. There's a pattern that happens with younger people where you flee to the cities and then when you reach the ages of 35 or so, you want to go back to a smaller town. And um, there's also evidence that this is happening earlier because of COVID. Um, so people that were really interested in living in cities before um, have, that's reversing. So they're calling it the reverse of the great migration back to, back to smaller towns earlier than it would have happened before. So prior to people hitting that 35 to 36 range, um, we can see the benefits of living in an apartment versus a home. Um, and, and that's what people are craving at this point. Um, if something like this were to prolong or, um, or happen in, in the future.
So some strategies, depending on um, where you are as a company, if you're hiring, holding, or, or laying off. If you are hiring, um, look at these areas that are, that are laying off talent um, in terms of the industries and um, the regions overall. Um, maybe you let go of people before in your pipeline that they wanted to work remotely reach back out to those people if, if that's the case. And then again, the University of Illinois interns and, and full-time students, their statuses are changing. Not all of them, but they are changing. And so it's worth um, noting that you are an employer that's currently hiring. And then um, companies that are on the front lines right now, uh, here's an example of a few of them, Open Door, Uber, Hertz, JCPenney, that have tech talent. They're not um, labeled as tech companies off the bat. However, they have tech talent that, um, that, that is being laid off. Um, and then it's important here when you're presenting yourself as a company, um, if you are fortunate to be hiring, that, that it comes off as a, as a message of that it's an honor to be in the space where, where you're not impacted negatively. Um, and how you communicate that is important, just given that a lot of a lot of people and companies are are, are really hurting. Um, and then noting that visa and immigration is is drastically impacted. So if you were a company that was able to get H one Bs for candidates, um, that's that's completely changed. Um, they're they're not new visas being granted in some of those government offices are completely closed currently. So um, um, I believe OPTs and the University of Research Park staff might know this better than I do. Um, OPTs are still fine. Um, however, getting those longer term employment visas for full time is, is going to be a, a, a night and day difference from, uh, from a month or two ago. Um, if you're holding, if you're one of those companies that is waiting it out to see what will happen, it's the perfect time to build up your virtual recruitment process. Um, that means how to interview software engineers remotely and in, in a quality way um, and setting up your overall guide for employee or for candidates to have a successful experience there. It's also a great time to build up your employer brand. And, um, and that simply means what the outside world thinks about your company, whether that's true or false, you have control over that. And so you get to pick. Um, so how do you broadcast that to the world right now? If you need more information there, um, I'm happy to send that to you. And then if you're laying off, um, still be a resource for your employees. So you can provide them with resume reviews and references, um, give them the list presented in, in this presentation of the companies that are definitely still hiring where that might be an option for them and making sure to be clear on if their job will be available in, um, in the foreseeable future. And then these are a few strategies before laying off. Um, I won't go over all of them, but, um, but one definitely to note here is the relocation of projects. The research park team has done a really good job of outlining what government funding is available and helping people apply to that. And so if you can relocate or redistribute some of your, some of your work to what would qualify for government funding, really something to look into. And, um, and the research park team is really helpful from that perspective, as well as the, the EDC. And this is um, a way to get a pulse of your employees and, and what's currently going on. Um, Qualtrics has, uh, made, Qualtrics has made this free for companies to use, uh, a free pulse. And then um, in terms of giving back and building your brand and what you can offer to your employees, um, these are companies that are making a lot of their services free. And so um, learning is a, a big part of that. Um, online learning is free. And then if you have children, 
um, some Comcast and, and other providers are, are drastically lowering rates or, or giving it for free. And then um, boosting morale. I won't go into all of these, you can read them, but these are just examples of what some companies have done to foster a sense of community and give employees something more to talk about. Um, and a positive note, as we all get bombarded with the, the newest updates on COVID, um, but it's also a good time to learn about each other. And when you come back to the office to um, have learn new things about your coworkers, even though we've all been um, more or less isolated to our homes. So one example of that is that one company is doing a history Monday. So every Monday, a new employee gets on and then it's a five minute slideshow of the things that they've done in their past that they, that they would love to share. And so you come back with, um, with knowing people better versus, um, versus coming back and, um, and, and feeling like you need to make up for um, feeling alone. And so these are some of the ways that, that companies are doing it. So please steal or adopt, or I hope, I hope these inspire you. And then again, all of these resources can be found in this folder here in terms of um, all of the companies that are hiring or laying off um, databases of talent that are now available and, um, and then HR help if, um, if you're on the, the laying off side or anything like that, um, there's plenty there. And then if you have any specific questions, um, this is my email. Um, thank you to all these people that helped me with this presentation. It's been um, extremely useful to get everyone's feedback. And, um, and then I'll be doing a, another webinar in, in about a little less than a month on, on May 21st. And um, if you have questions on any of this, please just, uh, please email me and that's my email there. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sophie. Um, we are happy to, if you have any questions, if you wanna put them in the chat, if you wanna send it to me directly, um, we wanted to, Jenny Kim, I'm going to turn it over to her for a minute for um, a couple of announcements about some upcoming events. And I see that Laura has put in the chat as we do offer, and I mentioned this in the beginning, that Sophie is available for um, consulting time with our research park companies um, to talk about many of these different issues. So um, she has a vast array of tools in her, in her toolbox. So thank you, Sophie. Um, so Jenny, I will um, turn it over to you for a few announcements. And again, if anyone wants to message us or put any questions in the chat, go ahead. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, Sophie touched on um, her next presentation or webinar that she will be delivering. That will be Thursday, May 21st um, from 12 to 1 p.m. And she will be talk talking about job search strategies if you are laid off. So um, she uh, we will send out information for that. We'll have another registration and everything, um, but we'll set up the link so that you can join that. Um, and then uh, a few things that she, another thing that she touched on that has been a pretty hot topic has been immigration and how COVID has been affecting um, immigration. So uh, we have, we are reaching out for, to do a panel for that one. So we are gonna have that, that will be uh, during the same week, but earlier, um, so Monday, May 18th or Tuesday, May 19th. We're waiting to hear back um, from some panelists, but we will be, um, we do have Gloria Yen, who is the director of the New American Welcome Center at the YMCA here on campus to talk about some general kind of community effects um, that she's been seeing. And then we have Stephanie Dvorak from uh, IS. She's the associate director um, at IS on the student advising side to help um, touch on some of the university um, impacts that she's seen on immigration and with students and she will be able to touch on the OPT portion and some cap gap uh, issues or anything that she's seen uh, there and then uh, we will have somebody to, that can discuss more a little bit more on the H1B um, and the legal side of issues so we again we will get those um, we will get all of the zoom meeting 
information out to you. It'll be on our calendar, but we will, can also send that out um, to those in this meeting. We have um, registration info. So. Thanks, Jimmy. And we are, uh, if anybody has any questions afterwards, feel free to reach out. Sophie's information is there. You can also reach out to the Research Park team. Um, if you, we do have all of your email addresses and we will follow up with you. And if you'd like to and see if you want to join our email list so that you can get um, regular information about presentations like this. And we'll include Sophie's information in that follow up as well. So thank you so much to everybody. We don't see any questions at this time. So we'll give you maybe 10 minutes back in your life that maybe you thought you wouldn't have today. But again, thanks so much. Sophie, I will uh, give you a little, where's my little, oh, I guess you can't see the reactions thing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to give my little round of applause thing. So thank you so much if anyone wants to add that and we'll see you all um, in the future. Take care, thank everyone. You. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thanks, Sophie.